Hello all, welcome to this touch analysis video by the analysis guy. Um, today we're going to be focusing on touch rugby defensive strategies. Uh, I hope you enjoy, as always, the rights are all owned by the relevant corporations. Uh, if you want to subscribe, um, enjoy the video. Let's get into it from the beginning. Uh, phase 1 defence. Uh, the clip is from a kickoff, and I think that shows the best way to defend from first phase as it's kind of structured straight away. Uh, but I'll talk to you guys again after the clip. Yeah, I think after. So as you saw there in the clip, uh, the English defence has formed kind of two lines, as shown by the green lines on the image that's in front of you now. Um, as a result, they've kind of segregated this is good on first phases you don't really want to push all six up because of that retreat of five meters so as a result you send one person up on the first phase and then from there you he is the one who makes a touch so if you saw during the clip they there's the first line come up together just to prevent a two on one and then a break so they come up as a line and then the part uh, they retreat as soon as they go in for the touch. So as a result of this, the English line is yeah, already there for the second phase of attack. So for phase six, I have two different aspects of the same type of defence. So they both show a drift defence. And as a result, they are managed to shut off the Wales wide play. So both times, well, when attacking on sixth phase, you've got to use try and score. So... No matter what happens, you're always trying to go round the defence because it's a lot easier to go round than through in a game like touch. Uh, so as a result of that, the defence is spreading out. And uh, after the clips, I'll explain why that is and what effect that's going to have. You set up in Wales as well. <laughs> yeah, he's easy to, to forget that Louis Trey is the junior, such as his quad. Reese Roberts. Spins it out long, it's good hands. But the this drawing is from the first clip and it just shows the part before the pass because the download that I have wasn't very clear. So, as you can see, the Welsh player is already shaping to pass and I think it's Will Serracold in that outside channel is already beginning to kind of push out. So, within the first 28 seconds, we're already seeing... England using that drift kind of defence off first phase, ready to shut down wide. So they've got three players on two in that middle channel there, but they're all ready to shift as soon as you're going for that pass. It requires a lot of trust of your inside man, this type of defence. So it's very, uh, very, what's the word, needed, paces kind of needed in the middle just to cover the inside shoulder. Of your outside man uh, but apart from that uh, not much is required apart from effort um, and as you saw I think it's in the second clip uh, stopping them from going wide and forcing them back in makes it even easier for you so um, yeah if you can try and control the people and force them or shut down their options when they try to go wide then it makes it your job a lot easier. Uh, and as you see in the second clip, the clip I'm showing after this, um, the interception comes from this brilliant defensive work on the drift, knowing the ball is going to have to go wide. So trying to either stop that pass going wide by just holding out on your line. If you blitz up, then if you miss a touch or the ball gets passed off, then the attack has the initiative. But just standing off forces them to try and work to an edge which makes it a lot easier to defend so enjoy the interception and then we'll focus on what went wrong for England when they conceded those tries Harry Davis spins one out long intercepted and off to the races goes Vaughan Meredith he's got a player up with him for England as well the touch comes in on Will Serrick so on to the final section why did England concede tries? Because as we've seen, they're able to shut them off on first phase and on the sixth phase. So what goes wrong? I've got one clip 
just to try and speed it up, try and offer a quicker way to digest this sort of defence. So, um, yeah, enjoy, and I will talk to you after the clip. Back from the static position. And we've got a fire up here. Surely Wells, Wells are in. in. So, as you probably noticed in that clip, the main reason Wales were able position. to score is because of that and English defender slipping Wells over. So, I've paused it just before due to the quality of the video that I've managed to open up. But uh, it really does stop that impressive drift that they've been using previously, as talked about under phase six. So, um, yeah, the phase six defense is what they're trying to go for he's trying to get up quickly to shut off his man while also pushing out as if you look at the angle he's trying to push off at but because he slips his outside man has to step in leaving the overlap uh which Wales are easily able to finish off due to some decent handling which is relatively basic so uh yeah I think that sums up that pretty well so, in summary, what have we learned? Uh, that tries do happen and you're not going to stop them, especially if you slip over, I think was the key part of that last clip. But at the beginning, we looked at phase one defence and we saw how they used a pack of three just to shut down that pass and then immediately uh, repositioned as soon as they knew the pass wasn't going to be gone. Um, then... As soon after that, we looked in the sixth phase where they use a drift defence to shut down the space on the outside to prevent an overlap. But uh, if you've got any ideas, any criticism, uh, comment down below and I will see you in another video, I guess. Uh, enjoy the rest of whatever you're doing.